What's up everyone, it's Spromethius, and today, like the title says, we are taking a close look at the St. Anthony Industries C70 Coffee Dripper, which on the surface looks like most cone-shaped brewers, but unlike many of the similar options on the market that run a 60 degree angle, this one rocks a 70. According to St. Anthony's, this design creates a taller brew column, which results in more water to coffee contact, which in turn results in more clarity for delicate and nuanced flavors, as well as higher extraction yields than other brewers. As a big fan of a clean cup of coffee, this all sounds really good to me, but these are some tall orders to fill. So in this video, I'll be putting these benefits to the test, as well as putting it up against its closest and most fiercest competition, the massively popular Hario V60. Side by side with the V60, arguably one of the most popular coffee drippers on the market, the C70 doesn't look all that different. Outside of that seemingly minor 10 degree difference, there are actually some features that stand out and play a big part in its brewing dynamics. The first big difference is its filter. Unlike most cone drippers that use a single ply, the C70 uses a uniquely folded and double layered filter. Also, unlike other filters, they say it doesn't need to be rinsed, so I put that to the test by steeping and tasting just the filter water. And it's not terrible, but there's definitely some paper flavor that comes through, so I'll stick with rinsing. The filter and the cone itself lead down to a significantly wider exit than its closest competition. Many of these factors come together to create that taller brew column that St. Anthony says is a key feature to the claims of a cleaner, more nuanced, more highly extracted cup. But does it? As you can imagine, brewing on the C70 isn't all that different than brewing on other cone drippers, and it utilizes all of the same variables, and you can pretty much use any of the popular methods that are out there like the 4.6, Hoffman's Recipe, or Osmotic Flow, just to name a few. The biggest difference I noticed right away was I can grind significantly finer on the C70 than I can on my V60 without much of a risk of choking the drawdown. So brewing it just like I would a V60 using my hybrid method, which utilizes a Kubomi Bloom to quickly saturate the bed, a 60% circular pour to create some thermal mass, a center pour to maintain the slurry temperature, and a quick swirl for an even drawdown creates a beautifully fragrant and flavorful cup. And even when I switched to more basic brewing techniques, it still resulted in delicious cups of coffee. And as you can see, it isn't lacking in the extraction department, but the question is, is it better than the V60? Considering how many times I use the V60 as a reference point in this video, it's only fair to talk about how they compare. For one, I would say as a longtime V60 owner, and it's actually the first brewing device I ever owned, it's actually one of the more finicky and nuanced to dial in, particularly for high extractions, but in the end, it's hard to beat. And when brewing the same copy side by side with the C70, there are most definitely some differences. I still find a well-brewed V60 to be a crisper and cleaner cup. It has more acidity, and I think it would still be my go-to choice for copies that lean on their fruity or citric notes. The C70, on the other hand, is still a great option because it's easier to brew well, if that makes sense. From the first brew to the last, at a variety of grind sizes and brew times, they were all tasty. It also seems to have a better overall balance, which creates a more approachable cup to maybe those who aren't used to light or medium roasts or the potential intensity of a pour over. The beauty of the C70 is in its familiarity. It's not a huge step forward or a huge step back, it's a lateral move. Saying that it's better than the V60 or vice versa isn't a fair take, as they both provide exactly what you'd expect, a properly delicious cup of coffee. But the C70 provides an easier platform for doing that, as it seems to be more forgiving to grind size and brew time than the V60 or other drippers I've used. In the end, I don't have any negative takeaways from my time using the C70, but I do think it has one distinct flaw, and that's its proprietary filters. For one, they are a few dollars more than your average cone filter, but they just aren't as readily available as the V60s that you can find at nearly any local cafe, so you'll have to stay on top of your stock if you go with the C70. With all that said, I think it's time to wrap this one up. Drop your thoughts on the V60, the C70, and any other pour over stuff you want to chat about in the comment section right down below, and of course, I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to the July Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, Christopher, Squeegee Rowe, Brian, Andre, Sean Noel, Spookus, Samantha, Claire, Stephen, Alexis, Josh B, Bound Copy, James K, Josh Horson, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, 
UK Espresso, Tim, Jason C, Jerry, Matt Ray, Home Barista Coach, Gumby, Zachary B, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Tyler M, Barista Michael, Sebastian, Matthew C, JRC, Arthur L, Absolute Stephen G, Jose, Lauren, Keefe, and Stephen A. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Sprometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Sprometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy, 